So I want to talk to you about walking down another street. And um, this other street is a street in which you have an awareness that not only do you have a physical body, but you have come to believe that this physical body is who you are and that you have locked yourself into these five senses and decided that whatever evidence they provide for you is how you identify and define your reality. By what I see, by what I hear, by what I smell, by what my wife, by life what looks like, by how much money I have, by the stuff that I possess. And this is the world of the ego. And this is the world of the false self. The false self is the ego. The ego is the part of us that has come to believe that who I am is defined by these six things. Who I am is what I have. And so we spend a big hunk of our life attempting to get as much stuff as we possibly can. The Tao teaches something very different. Let go of everything you have. When I moved to Maui in 2005 full time, I gave up everything that I owned. Everything. 20,000 books, all of my photographs, records of every description, uh, furniture, all the things in the house, all my clothing, shoes, it was all donated to people who lived on the, underneath a, a bypass on, in, in Florida and um, let go of all of it. So the ego teaches us you are what you have. The Tao teaches us let go of everything that you have. Do less and accomplish more. One of Lao Tzu's most famous observations was, I do nothing and leave nothing undone. My son has taken to becoming a spiritual Taoist. Every time I tell him to do something, he says, I do nothing and I leave nothing undone. But there's much wisdom in that. I could go on into that. Um, the second thing that the ego teaches us is that who I am is not only what I have, but who I am is what I do, what I accomplish. And so we spend a big hunk of our lives believing that the way that we become, quote, successful, happy, fulfilled, self-actualized, whatever it might be, is on the basis of what I accomplish, what my resume looks like, um, how many promotions I get. And so we send our children off to school and we ask them to learn to identify themselves on how much they get and what they accomplish. Your grades become more important than what it is that you are studying, what you own, what clothes you wear, what labels you have, and so on. And we become obsessed with this kind of absurdity. And we, this is the false self at work. The third thing that the ego teaches us is that I am what other people think of me. I am my reputation. So becoming obsessed with our reviews, what people think of us, other people's opinions, getting the approval of others. We talk about peer group uh, you know, approval needs and so on. I have eight children that aren't concerned about those things. They were never raised with that kind of a mentality. The whole idea of you know, trying to please other people was something that they consist consistently heard from their mother and myself that this isn't important to us. We don't, uh, we're not attached to that. And um, this kind of an attachment. So the Tao teaches us that what you think of me is none of my business. What the ego teaches us is that what you think of me is the most important thing that I have. And so I'll do whatever it is that I need to do in order to get you to agree with me, to like me, to approve of me and so on. The fourth thing that the ego teaches us, this false self, is that who I am is separate from everyone else. And so we are raised in this world of the false self, which teaches us that we have to be in competition with everyone else. We have to defeat someone else. Being number one is the most important thing. And you see people doing this all the time at football games and at bat. And you'll see it when the Olympics come up, you know, that the gold medal is more important than anything else. And if I don't, you'll see people weeping and sobbing over this idea that um, I have to, I have to be better than somebody else in order to be fulfilled in my life. The fifth thing that the ego teaches us is that I am separate not only from everybody else, but that I am separate from what's missing in my life. The Tao teaches us that there is no place that God is not. If there is no place that God is not, then God must be in you. And if there is no place that God is not, 
then God must also be in all that I perceive to be missing from my life. And therefore, in order to become a manifester and to attract into my life what I want, I simply have to realign myself. I have to rejoin. I have to yoga myself to God. And the most egregious error of the ego is a belief system that says that who I am is separate from God, that God is something outside of me. We have not been raised to understand and believe that at our basic core, what, we, what Lao Tzu called our original nature, what we are is love. And all we have to do is be that and live that. There was a great Indian poet, his name was Rabindranath Tagore, and he received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913 for a collection of poetry called the Gitanjali. And in that poem, that long poem, 90 some verses, one of those verses says this, he's speaking of the ego. He said, I went out alone on my way to my tryst, but who is this me in the dark? I step aside to avoid his presence, but I escape him not. He makes the dust rise from the earth with his swagger. He adds his loud voice to every word I utter. He is my own little self, my Lord. He knows no shame, but I, I am ashamed to come to thy door in his company. That's a great poet, and that's a great piece of truth, that in order to get to this place, I speak about, that Maslow t spoke to me about and trained me to think about, called self-actualization, is that we have to stop evaluating who we are on the basis of those ego identifiers and instead begin to see ourselves as divine love.